Eddie, an unemployed truck driver, reunites with his ex-wife, Annie, after she suffers a devastating accident. John, a brilliant and witty doctoral student, hires overworked Jess as a caregiver. As their lives intersect, the story delves into the chasm between abundance and need and explores the space where bodies with or without disability meet each other. I'm development director Brad Martin. And I am company member Bakari Levy. And welcome to the Trust Us Podcast. On this episode, we will discuss our upcoming show, 2018 Pulitzer Prize winner, Cost of Living, running February 22nd through March 2nd at Trust Us in the Side Door Theater. So, Bakari, this is really great. This is our first yeah. Trust Us podcast. And uh, even though we have this really cool script that you put together, which is awesome, we're kind of going off script for a second because that's really fun and interesting. But I will say that uh, we did speak with our artistic director, Chad Henderson, and director of this upcoming play, Paul Kaufman, as well as actor John, who is played by Bauer Westerin, who's kind of a new actor for Trust Us Theater. And uh, so you talked with him, right? Yeah, I think it's his first go, period. He said it's, uh, well, other, he'll explain later, but other than a few things, it's it's his first full stage. You know, and what's great is I was uh, in the uh, side door theater last night taking some photographs, and uh, he and uh, Ellen Radio Fowler worked together really, really well. Yeah. And uh, he's doing great. You would not know that this is his first show at Trust Us. He sounds very calm and sure of himself, actually. So I think uh, everybody will be really interested to hear his take. Yeah, definitely. And I'm sure he said a lot of great things. So, well, so yeah. So let's talk a little bit more about this this play. It's Cost of Living. Um, The show was expanded and adapted from a one-act play written by Polish-American playwright Martina Mayok in 2015. and. As you wrote here, it was titled John Who's Here from Cambridge. So yeah, that was the original title. There was a one act, apparently, uh, before she fleshed it out into this full length. Well, so, and then she created Cost of Living, right? right. And uh, then it, I, think, I think it was written in 2016, but it, it, the Pulitzer Prize is just from last year. Right, just 2018's Pulitzer Prize winning play. And that's really what's great about Trust Us Theater is that Chad, our artistic director, really pulls from recent award-winning shows, you know, we're all, we're, right. we, we just did Curious Incident of the Dog in the Nighttime, which had won the Tony Award just a few years ago. We're doing Sweat, which is also a Pulitzer Prize winning yeah, show. Yeah, we talked about it. This is our first of two Pulitzer Prize winners in the, uh, in the season, actually. Well, and then we're doing Heathers this summer, and one, I'm sure that's won a Pulitzer, right? I, <laughs> I think so. <laughs> that and Clueless, the film, the Pulitzer Prize winners. Well, in Silence the Musical, we started the season with that. I'm sure that was a Pulitzer Prize winning show as well, right? <laughs> it, won, uh, it won someone's Pulitzer. But it was awesome. It We've was. actually had a really, really great season this year, and we're really going off script, but this is really fun. Because, <laughs> if you uh, listen we- really closely, you may hear uh, an actor from actually the last show and a couple of the interviews. Oh, who's that? Oh, should I not give that away? I think... <laughs> Wait, you mean I'm talking to an actor? Do you know who, I think you know who it is. That I'm, you mean I'm talking to somebody that acted in one of our shows in the past? Not currently. Oh. But you know an actor shows up in a cameo in one of the interviews. Hmm. A canine actor. A canine actor. Oh! <laughs> So you're saying that you were doing an interview and there might have been a dog barking in the background. That's what I'm saying, yes. <laughs> if you hear a dog barking, that it's, that's an actor uh, <laughs> backstage during a show. <laughs> so what Bakari is talking about is that in our recent show that we just closed, The Curious Incident of the Dog in the Nighttime, there was a dog owned by Christine Hellman. Yeah who uh, was in Curious Incident, and the dog was uh, made a cameo right at the end of the show um, and played Sandy, the dog. What is... Why am I forgetting this dog's name? The dog's name is Bear. That is right. The dog's name is Bear. <laughs> Bear became my buddy throughout the entire run of Curious Incident because I would be up in my office working, and he would hang out up there, and I would keep him from barking all night long. <laughs> <laughs> so there's a bear cameo in a, in a later interview, but uh, you ready? I think we should go ahead and get into it. Absolutely. Okay, so the uh, first we're going to hear from our artistic director, Chad Henderson. 
Well, Trust Us has a long-standing history of producing, uh, you know, the Tony winners for Best Play, Pulitzer Prize winners for Drama, and uh, uh, Martina Mayock, uh, Cost of Living. She won the Pulitzer for um, this play in 2008. And um, when I read it, uh, you know, it's kind of like whenever there's something that wins a Pulitzer, I mean, any storyteller wants to get that in front of their eyes, if anything. Sometimes maybe selfishly as a director, sometimes, you know, you get to be in a a wonderful place like this where you get to, you know, have a lot of stories told throughout a year. So, um, you know, opened up the script and uh, was met with what I thought was a really compelling piece. It was a story about, uh, you know, it was a really great story about these characters. Um, And it's a a show with four people in the cast. So, um, kind of on paper it made a lot of sense four great actors and then you put a, a really great director behind it and so uh that's what we that's what we came to and so now it's on our season yeah here it is uh it's about to open here at the end of february and the director paul kaufman who we'll hear from later uh is a company emeritus member is that correct yes he's a member of our company emeritus which is um which is a group of actors uh, or theater artists um who have really put in a lot of time here and uh, also brought a lot of their talents uh, above and beyond. Um, and so uh, he was definitely one of our uh, our first members to that new group that we've had going for a couple years now, a couple seasons. Um, he's also the winner of the South Carolina Arts Commission Acting Fellowship, um, which is really exciting uh, that he's a part of our number. And, uh, you know, Paul... Yes, he works in Columbia. Does, uh, he does great work all across the nation with his uh, Kaufman Forensic Actors. And, uh, you know, he also has done shows in Wales and Australia, Key West, um, New York. So, I mean, he, he's, you know, got a lot of uh, tenure behind him. What and, was Paul uh, most recently seen on our stage in? Uh, most recently, he was seen as Terry in our world premiere production of Boy About Ten, which was a, a John Tuttle play that we produced in August of 2018. Here's artistic director Chad Henderson giving you a little bit more information about the story of Cost of Living. In the case of Cost of Living, it tells a story that I don't think is often told, and it's the it's and it's a story about two characters uh, with disability and their caretakers. So one is uh, about a couple um, from an estranged marriage, uh, and the other one is um, um, a young man who's hiring a, a caretaker. You know, he's a he's a Princeton student, and um, and so I think for us, it's really about learning uh, how these. These characters have so many strengths, and um, what we're really finding out is the fragility of the the people who don't have a disability and how they're interacting in these situations. And it, I think it really pulls the curtain back on something we don't often talk about, and that is uh, living with disability. Um, you know, we're really excited to partner with Able SC on this show. They're great advocates for the uh, uh, community with disability. And uh, Kimberly Tussaud, who's their executive director, has been working with us a lot to, uh, you know, approach this story and um, and, to, and to also make it an, an opportunity for us to make the theater more accessible um, and, to and patrons authentic. with disability. Yeah. And, 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 and authentic. Um, and part of that authenticity, a big mission of ours was to make sure we honored the playwrights request that these two characters with disability be played by actors with disability. So okay. we're really excited to work with, uh, Kathy Lalima and, uh, Bauer Westerin. These two answered the call at an open call and came in the room and, uh, we're so excited to have them working on this production along with, uh, Eric Boltman and Ellen Rodeo. Um, so we got a really top notch cast and a very, uh, what I would call responsible casting went into this show, um, yeah, agreed. which I think is important. Um, well, it is important. I don't think it's important. It's 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 important. It's mandatory, really. If you're gonna, it, it was kind of one of those things where if we couldn't cast this correctly, then we weren't gonna do it. And then uh, the second part of the equation was working with uh, Kimberly and her team at Able, making sure that the show itself, when it's in performance, is accessible to audiences with disability. Um, so another great element they're adding to it with their support is we're gonna have uh, interpreters uh, for the deaf at every show. Which is really cool to me. I grew up, you know, in the deaf community in Spartanburg with um, my grandparents were deaf. Uh, my mother and her whole family worked at the school for the deaf and blind. So, you know, it's it's interesting to kind of watch that part of my life for surface in this place where I work. And it kind of makes me, you know, wish we'd had the ability to do that sooner. So I, it's really about, you know doing the show responsibly and um we're uh, doing the last two years of pulitzer winners this year we're going to be doing cost of living one 2018's pulitzer for drama and then we'll be doing sweat which won 2017's pulitzer for drama on the main stage in uh later this spring so uh big year for that and uh i'm anxiously awaiting to find out what wins for 2019 <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> cost of living is such a wonderful show 
and here's the reason why you should come see it. I feel like, uh, you know, people really appreciate, I, I get this response from so many patrons that they appreciate that Trust Us really tries to provide our community with contemporary work. And not only that, but I think, you know, being one of the first in the states to produce this work, I think it's a pretty exciting time here. Um, you know, understanding that if you're going to honor the playwright's request and cast responsibly in this uh, for this show, um, I'm so proud that we've gotten to the point where we are able to do that and welcome in new artists uh, from the community into our building. And it's going to be a really special time here at Trust Us. So um, I think one thing that's good to understand, just, you know, when people th think about um, contemporary work, sometimes they have the idea that something's going to be um, sad or, or, or it's not going to bring them joy. I really think this piece has a lot of um, discoveries in it for audiences, and I think it's got a, an incredible amount of humor that may not be expected in this. Um, and so I just want uh, folks to understand they're going to have a really rich evening in the theater, and it's in our 50-seat side door space, which is for those of you who haven't experienced it, right? I mean, it's yes. I mean, you've worked in there. It's um, it's just a great place to, I would say, see, taste, and smell the acting. But, I agree. Uh, but uh, you get to really sit in the room with uh, these people, and there's no division. Um, I mean, you can reach out and touch them sometimes. I think that's pretty incredible. And uh, it keeps it keeps the audience small, but uh, it, it creates a different type of evening than you're used to, um, you know, going to the Coger Center or right. one of the larger, you know, houses. So um, you feel like it's really special. Action. Yes. Yes. Which is gets your connection to the piece really amped up. And so uh, this is going to be a great piece for this uh, theater and especially for the side door space. So people need to check it out. Bakari, that was a great interview with Chad. Oh, thank you. <laughs> this is awesome. He did it. Yeah, he did a good job. He had a lot of really interesting things to say, and I, I like. I felt like he was a a bit nervous, but he had no need to be. Well, hey, this is our first uh, Trust Us podcast, so a little nerves on the first one is pretty cool, actually. I agree. So, um, speaking I, of nerves, uh, speaking of nerves. <laughs> So we have our next show coming up, and uh, <laughs> before we recorded this, I think it was funny, uh, we were trying to think of the name of the show, and we said it was Five Guys Eating a Hamburger, but it's actually not. <laughs> it's Five Lesbians Eating a Quiche, <laughs> um, and this is a show that's coming up uh, March 8th, uh, and we are doing that show at the Reformation Lutheran Church, and it starts March 8th and mar runs through March 17th. Uh, five lesbians eating a quiche. This is actually the third time Trust Us has done this show. It's the third? I'm, yeah, I'm pretty sure it's okay. the third time. No, I mean, I believe you. I just don't. No, I think you are right. <laughs> it it's such like a popular show. We got to bring it back. You got to bring it back. Everybody loves it. Robin Gottlieb, uh, who, is, who everybody should know Robin. But if you don't know Robin, Robin was in Fun Home last year. She was. She's one of the leads in Fun Home. She was awesome in Fun Home, and she's directing this again. Um, and this is pretty much the same cast that we've had in the past doing the show, except for new actors Jennifer Hill and Krista Forrester. Oh, great. Um, are joining the cast. Both company members. Both company members. And uh, so we're actually doing this show off-site, which is a really cool thing that Chad's done uh, this year. We were partnering with the Reformation Lutheran Church in Earlwood where uh, folks can go out there, and it's a, about 100 seats uh, that uh, people will go actually be able to see this show. So you can get tickets online at trustus.org. But what's cool about it is this show takes place in a church basement. So what better oh. thing to do than to actually have it in a church well, sort of a basement. I actually don't know the show. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm actually, I'm excited to see it personally. I'm excited to see it too, because I, I mean, I haven't seen it. You know, this is my second year with the theater and I never saw it before, but everybody says it's an absolute blast of a show and the cast is hilarious and Robin is hilarious. So we know that this is going to be an awesome show to see. So you better get your tickets now because they're going to sell out before you know it immediately so you can call the box office at 803-254-9732 and you can also get tickets online at trustus.org so bakari we're going to take a minute now and talk with paul kaufman actually you did a great interview with him paul is the director of cost of living yeah thank you paul uh was a great person to interview he uh was super chill the whole time and it seems like he's got a really great handle on the show well, and, and Paul's a great person. You know, he's been around with Trust Us Theater for, for many, many, many years. Yeah. 
And he actually, you probably remember Paul Kaufman last year. He was uh, in Fun Home as well, and he was in several shows last year at Trustus Theater. So that's right, he was. In, he, I feel like he was in almost everything. <laughs> it seemed like he was. I think Paul was in. Was it four shows last year? Because he also was in Boy About Ten. He was yes. in Bright Room Called Day. He was in Fun Home. Fun Home. And then the season before that, he was in Hand to God. Right. Wait, he was in Constance. Yes, he was also in Constance. So he was in four shows yeah. last year. And so, and Bakari did a great interview with him. So we're going to cut now to Paul talking about cost of living and his role as the director of this great show. I tend to approach uh, directing a play a lot like I do as an actor, um, asking people to kind of examine the characters in detail and then motivations and then kind of put them against each other and see what we can make. Um, and this is a play I think that calls for a little less heavy hand as a director. Okay. I've kind of had a, a light touch with it, I think, and trying to stay out of the way of the piece because it's I a spectacularly written piece. Uh, so it sounds like you've got a great, uh, a solid cast and production team. Then. I think I do. Yeah. I've got, um, two very experienced actors and two less experienced actors, but What's interesting is we're finding a lot of real emotions uh, happening. And to me, I, th I think that's going to actually make for a pretty interesting combination. My partner, Eric Boltman, uh, is playing one of the parts. Ooh. And uh, yeah, I didn't cast the play, so there's no uh, nepotism. <laughs> uh, another director was attached to this play before I got it. Uh, but Eric was cast in it already. And Eric is a former holder of the State Fellowship in Acting and the director of the Sumter Little Theater and also has done a number of shows here. Uh, I heard earlier is. that you were the current recipient. I am the current recipient. I am. I love that. Uh, yes. So we're a two fellowship household. Thank you, South Carolina oh. Arts Commission. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank that must you. Be, that's a nice household. Thank you. <laughs> I, I was the runner up for that that a fellowship twice. I was the alternate twice. And so I was very honored to receive it this year. And I proudly represent the South Carolina Arts Commission. Brandon McEver, a former tech director here at the theater, is the set designer. And we're going for a very uh, minimalist look. Um, but trying to keep it from being absolutely cold. It's not stark exactly. Uh, we're including some interesting kind of warmer colors. And the play calls for uh, some kind of difficult things um, set-wise, uh, running water, for example, in a couple of scenes. Wow. And so there was kind of a decision to be made, were we going to spend the whole budget on the running water right. and have that, or were we going to try to make some more stylized decisions um, and be able to do more? And I think... I think the direction we've taken it is going to be very, very effective. Um, because for my taste, the playwright who won the Pulitzer for this play right. this last year, I mean, it's an extraordinary play, but her language is so, um, her dialogue is very realistic. And, and I, I think this kind of spare, but slightly stylized approach is really going to set her words off. Here's Paul Kaufman, the director of Cost of Living, talking about his connection with this show and the process by which he's gone about directing the Cost of Living. The story involves two people with disabilities, um, and the other two uh, characters you see don't have disabilities. They're people without disabilities. But I don't really think of the play as being about uh being disabled in any way or, or being a person with a disability in that I think the larger question is in which ways are all, all people dealing with disabilities? Right. Do we have emotional disabilities or psychological disabilities? And how did we deal with loss and how do we deal with disappointment? Um, and the play really sets you up quite well to find those things out. I think we're sponsored by Able South Carolina who, um, you know, advocates for all kind of people with disabilities in our state and is really forward thinking in their approach to creating accessible spaces and accessible events. So um, we met with their director, Kimberly, and kind of discussed how we can make this show the most accessible show we've ever done. Right. On stage, for example, built into the set and on stage, we have a sign language interpreter at every performance. Um, and then we're going to ask everybody who makes reservations, do you, know, do you have any special needs? For example, are you in a wheelchair, for example? Right. And while that will change the sort of seating grid a little bit, we're very excited to be able to incorporate all those people into the larger audience and not in any way segregate them into a corner right. because that incorporate happens so and often. Accommodate. Yes, yes. I mean, and so it's really uh, 
for me, I think it's a source of great pride. And there's a kind of pride movement among the disability community. And they're very um, forward thinking in how we can start to incorporate more people with disabilities into our work. And I think that's spectacular. Here's Bakari Levy talking with Paul Kaufman again about this script. When I read it, <clears throat> I was very wowed. I, yeah. I, it does... It looks like it's going somewhere and it may or may not go there and some things do turn out the way you think and others don't. And for me, how deftly that's handled by the playwright is is just beautiful. It's it's fireworks to me. But there's nothing extraordinary about it. There is because it's us. It's everybody. And yeah. we've all been in these kind of situations where you hope something will turn out one way and, or, and something else happens. Um, so I think from the very beginning of the play through to the end, there are moments where people would just be really extremely touched and moved. It's not its not just a heavy play at all either. There's a lot of amusement because the characters, two of the characters know each other in one set of the scenes and two characters don't in the other. So watching these people deal with each other either at the beginnings of a relationship or maybe at a later stage in a relationship um, makes a beautiful contrast. Right. It's really, really fun to watch every night. I, I sit back and go, Hmm, I, Oh, I got to take notes. I you know, but I'm already enjoying watching <laughs> you get it. Lost and in we're it. still a few weeks out. Yeah. So even being several weeks from opening, um, I think we're in a really good place. It feels really good. Bakari, that was a great interview with Paul Kaufman, the director of cost of living. Thank you. And we're really excited to have Paul doing this because, you know, I've been in some of the rehearsals and he's really working well to get the staging of this show looking great because you have two actors that are in these powered chairs that interact with two people that are their caregivers. And so staging this and making this look and feel realistic has been a challenge. And Paul is doing a great job at that. Yeah, Paul is, uh, he sounds like he's having a really good time working through that as well as working um, with Able SC. Um, I know that working with him as a partner uh, is, is a part of our further integration with the community. Well, yeah, we, we're really proud to be working with and partnering with Able SC. And, uh, you know, Bauer Westerin, who is one of the actors in this show, works for Able SC, and we're really excited. You know, they've been helping us. You know, they provided the power chairs that we're using um, and are doing a lot of things to help make this show accessible to folks that come in and see the show that have disabilities of their own. So we're really excited to be partnering with them and, and very proud of that. Yeah. Uh, and we have a talk back with them. I believe it is on... Um, the February 24th performance after the matinee. Right, that's the Sunday matinee. Absolutely. There's going to be guests from Able SC talking about how they work in the community, um, how we as people can, you know, interact uh, with folks that have disabilities and, and, and make their lives, all of our lives, better in this community. So we're really excited about, about seeing that and listening to them. So that's going to be a great thing to see. So that's going to be Sunday the 24th after the matinee. Awesome. And I believe the uh, cast and um, director will also be on hand for that. And speaking of the cast, we do have an interview with um, Bauer Westerin, who plays John. Oh, that's great. So that's coming up next. We can't wait to hear that. And, and Bauer's a terrific person. Like we said earlier, this is his new, he's new to Trust Us. This is his first show with us, and he's doing a terrific job. Paul's a wonderful director. Um, this may be coming up later, but I am kind of a newbie at acting. He did say he had two new actors or newer yeah. actors. Um, so, I mean, I've done things in like holiday pageants and things like that and um, did some performing with a circus troupe in town. Okay. Um, Soda City Cirque. Oh, yeah, um, that's awesome. But it was more that had a couple of, of character bits where I wasn't playing myself, but most of the time I'm playing myself right. in some way, shape or form. Um, so this is, and as far as a big production and learning lots of lines and a whole play, this, this is a first. Is it, is it intimidating? Is it exciting? All of the above? Yes. All of the above. Um, definitely exciting. Um, definitely intimidating. Um, wanting to put the best foot forward right. as, as far as um, doing justice to this play. The more I read the play and the more I heard the play being performed, um, the more I was like, oh, she's 
referencing back to this um, from a completely different character, but it ties into this and, and it just, and then the, the flow of the language, I know Paul has talked a lot about, and I don't know if in the podcast he talks about it, but I know with us, he talks a lot about the, the music of the language. Right. Um, and we're trying to do justice to that. Um, one thing he said that really stuck with me is um, we're just going to, we're going to try to get out of the way of the play. Don't, yes. don't overdo it. Don't, tr- don't think about it too hard. Here's actor Bauer Westerin, who plays John, talking about his character and the journey he takes throughout this show. I, I have to admit, I struggled a bit um, trying to sort of embody this character. I mean, I do have a disability. I don't have the specific disability that John does. Um, so there's a little bit of artifice, if I can use that right, yeah. hoity-toity term. Um, <laughs> feel free to edit that out. Um, there's a bit of artifice in in my portrayal. Um, so I don't have cerebral palsy. I don't think it's actually specifically mentioned within the play. That it's, it is it's, palsy? It's, um, you, the, as an audience member, you never right. hear that he has CP. Okay. Um, but it's written in there that that's what it is specifically. Um, and the way, and not to give too much away, but the way it's described, the way he describes himself and right. his experience as a person with, with the disability, um, you probably get a sense of what it is. John in particular, at the, at the beginning of the play, he's got this confidence, yeah. but it's what I would like to call a false confidence. Um, he, he's putting on this persona. Right. So that's kind of interesting. So I'm playing a character who's playing another character in, in some way. Um, Levels. Yeah, exactly. It's like an onion. But um, so, yeah, it's and he's doing that because there is some insecurity there uh, with him. And so throughout the play, he's at the beginning, he's very guarded and he's very much, no, I'm in control. Right. I may be in this chair, this wheelchair, but um, I'm in control. And he does that with his voice and with his his um, his commands. Um But then as the play goes along, there's this breaking down of that wall that he's built up. Um, And he becomes much more vulnerable um, and and trusting. Um, So there's a trust that develops between him and Jess, uh, his caretaker. And so he is able to feel like he can let go of that that persona, that that wall. And... um, and so, yeah, it's, it's, it's kind of a beautiful, um, we get to see the, the man behind the mask right. um, after a while. People with disabilities are just as complex as everybody else. Um, people with disabilities um, and without disabilities. I mean, and, and we all have disabilities in our own way, but with physical, like major disabilities, People in, in society nowadays seem to almost make them sort of flat characters. Um, that That's all they see is the disability. That All they see is the wheelchair. All they see is the cane because the person is blind. Um, they don't see the nuances that they would see in somebody else. They don't care to find out about those things. Um Somebody who also has a disability, I I was talking with them a little while ago, and I will edit this um, for obvious reasons in a second, but um, they said when um, this kind of question comes up and this kind of topic comes up in in conversation, um, they basically said that people with disabilities are jerks. That was not the word they used. Jerks, too. Um, And yeah, it's... It's kind of an interesting thing. I mean, John is kind of that way where he is, um, he doesn't care uh, as much about what he says and how it comes across, at least at the beginning. Um, And so, yeah, I I want people to understand that people with disabilities are, are people too. Exactly. Exactly. (laughs) And that's what we're trying to do with, with these characters is make them that because that's what they are on the page. I really appreciated um, that the there are specific notes in this play script that say the two characters that have disabilities in the play must be played by people with disabilities. I really kind of appreciated that. 
Um, even if we're not playing people who have the exact disability on display, yeah, we have, um, we have a better sense of what it is to be someone in, with a disability right. than somebody who's just an actor. Yeah. It's a- like a that whole part. representation of, a uh, of the identity. Yeah. 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 And, um, it, it, when I saw, um, curious incident of the dog in the nighttime, um, with uh, the main character who has autism and, and the mm-hmm. actor who has autism mm-hmm. or is on the spectrum, there are just so many little subtle things that I don't think somebody who doesn't, who hasn't lived that experience could, it would be able to fake it. Right. And let it fly. Um, so yeah, there's, there's an authenticity to it that, that I really appreciate. So we're back again, and Bakari, thank you so much. That was a great interview with Bauer. Thank you. Bauer, I think, thank you, Bauer. Bauer did a great job, honestly. He, uh, it's very, very hard to edit him because there's too many good things. <laughs> <laughs> That's always the great thing when you interview, interview somebody that has a lot of great stuff to talk about. You want yeah. you want to include everything. And that's really the great thing about this podcast, and, and I'm so thankful that we're able to do this, uh, to talk a little bit more in-depth about these shows. and. We can do more than, you know, a minute long interview, yeah. or, you know, on YouTube. Right. We can, uh, you can get kind of a real sense of, um, you know, maybe not even, maybe yes, what you're walking into, but also kind of what the process is like. Well, and that's really true. And you get some of the behind the scenes sort of insights and we're really excited about that. So uh, we're going to wrap it up here, but I want to let you know that in the next few weeks, we'll have our next podcast. That's right. About five lesbians eating a quiche. Right. And that's going to be opening up March 8th. So Bakari and I will get together a few days before that. We'll be excited. We'll have some of the actors from Five Lesbians on, as well as director Robin Gottlieb. So I think this has been a great first I, podcast. I've had a great time. I have I'm had, enjoying it. This has been awesome. I'm really <laughs> thrilled that Bakari asked me to do this. I hope everybody out there that's listening, uh, please make sure to come see Cost of Living. It's a terrific, terrific show. Don't forget, it opens up uh, Friday, February 22nd at the Side Door Theater, um, which is on the Lady Street, Lady Street side of the Trustus Theater. So you can find parking right there. It's a great 50-seat small black box theater. So come early, get a great seat. It's a terrific show. And then make sure to tune in in a few weeks when we talk about five lesbians eating a quiche. And exactly. uh, that's going to be a great, that's going to be a lot of fun talking with that Rob and show. the cast there. I'm stu- yeah, I'm stuck to learn more about that show because I actually don't know that much about it. So that'll be great. Well, and I, I wasn't around to see it before. And I sh- I'm sure that all of our listeners out there have seen it. Probably. And, yes, I'm sure. <laughs> and so they're all going to be excited to see that again. Um, thank you again for listening to this uh, first Trust Us podcast, hopefully first of many. Yes, thank you guys so much. Uh, if you have any ideas, thoughts, feel free to let us know. <laughs> yeah, know. you can you can email me, brad at trustus.org, um, and let us know, you know what you want to hear, what you want to listen to on this podcast. If you have some topics, some ideas, we are all about it. So... With that being said, thank you so much for listening to this first edition of the Trustus Podcast. Bye.